What is up, fellow Patriots and silver and gold stackers out in the YouTube universe? This is Bar911970. Thank you for watching my channel. All right, guys, here's a little question for you. I want to show you how the government and schools that educate you and how the media basically will lie to you until basically we all decide it's time to not allow it anymore. Now, I'm assuming that the majority of people that watch this have been educated by the public school system. Probably 99.8% of you watching this have been uh, trained in education from the public schools. Let me ask you a question. Most people will get this answer wrong. So if you have anybody in your house that doesn't believe that we're lied to and it's all conspiracies and all nothing but uneducated crazy people to talk about this stuff, Ask them this very question. Who was the first president of the United States? I'll pause for a second. Now, 999,999 out of a million people will most likely say, because they were told this in, in school, in public school, George Washington would be their answer. Now, if you said that George Washington was the first president of the United States, you would be wrong. As a matter of fact, there were 14 other presidents elected before George Washington. He was the first president elected under the Constitution. First president of the United States was John Hanson. They all served one-year terms. So... When you think about how you are educated, and I use that term loosely, schools are more about training you to respect authority, to fear authority, to do what you're told, to be programmed. So they train you at an early age. It doesn't stop from there. Mainstream media, now we're talking radio, newspaper, television. They've learned long ago that if you give out information, even if it's a lie, tell it long enough, it becomes truth. They learned this a long time ago. That's how they got women to smoke. That's how they get all their agendas, all different things passed. Because if you read it in a newspaper, hear it on the radio, or see it on TV, most people will automatically assume that it's true. And for the majority of my life, that's what I thought. Until I started researching things, until I started waking up as far back as, um, I would say it started in 2010. I really didn't know when or why at that point. But honestly, it wasn't until 2012 that I really started learning all that was going on. In 2011, I talked about a lot about gold and silver, which is something I highly recommend to start collecting if you haven't collected any. But majority of my quote-unquote awakening was in 2012 and learning all the things that I learned. I stopped watching cable television for about a year now. I don't listen to the radio. I don't read newspapers anymore. There's a reason why it's called television. And there's a reason why they call it television programming. It's because the news media will basically either flat out lie to you give misinformation, or omit truths. That's what they love to do. When you omit part of the truth, it's the same as lying. So that's how they get people. They give some information, and sometimes they give very good information. But if you omit specific facts, that could take a big chunk out of a story in learning of, about the truth. And that's why things like Sandy Hook shooting. Now, unless you were there, we will never really know what really happened. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't question things. Like, what happened to that person that was being chased by the police that was shown on ABC News live cam via helicopter? Where is the ca uh, camera uh, from the school? Where is the autopsy reports? Where is the autopsy report for Adam Lanza? What kind of drugs was he on? You know, what about the, the autopsy report saying that all the children were killed by long-range rifles 
and yet Adam Lanza was found dead with only two handguns and a long-range rifle in his trunk. Now, again, there are people who are going to think it could be a conspiracy, which the sad thing is most people don't know the definition of conspiracy. The definition of conspiracy is when one or more individuals conspire to do something. But see, the mainstream media makes you think conspiracy is some evil thing where only crazy people dwell. Now, unfortunately, people like myself and others who try and speak the truth, sometimes we can be overly passionate because it's almost like that whole thing from Back to the Future where, you know, they, they go like, hello, McFly. It's almost like you're amazed that people don't get it. But unfortunately, the average person, especially in the United States of America Corporation, will know more about who's going to be on television, who's going to be in the next Dancing with the Stars. You know, all these people, they'll know that more than they'll even know about the Constitution. And when we talk about things like the Second Amendment, look at what's going on. And people use their First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, to be able to talk about the Second Amendment, which is the right to bear arms. Now, here's the funny part. If it wasn't for the Second Amendment, we would never even have a First Amendment. How ironic is that? So we need to learn truth. And that's why research is the key. And that's why, like the video I made yesterday, talking about the gold trim around the flag and what it means, people need to know this. Because when you go to court, you're not being treated fairly. And if you don't know about the definition through symbolism of your identification like your driver's license, your birth certificate, um, any kind of government-issued like passport, your name is in most likely in all capital letters. If your name is not in all capital letters, you are either extremely wealthy, related to a politician, or have some very high connections. That's not the majority of people. The majority of people, we are cattle. We are property. I know that sounds strange. I know that sounds weird. But that's the true definition of normalcy bias. And I'm going to give you the definition of normalcy bias, and it will apply to a lot of people. And unfortunately, this is something that is very, it's, it's very common. But the definition of normalcy bias, it refers to a mental state people enter when facing a disaster. It causes people to underestimate both the possibility of a disaster occurring and its possible effects. This often results in situations where people fail to adequately, adequately excuse me, prepare for a disaster. And, on a larger scale, the failure of governments to include the populace in its disaster preparations. The assumption that is made in the case of the normalcy bias is that since a disaster has never occurred, um... Let's see what it says. The normalcy bias is that since a disaster has never occurred, then it never will occur. I apologize. It also results in the inability of people to cope with a disaster once it occurs. People with a normalcy bias have difficulties reacting to something they have not experienced before. People also tend to interpret warnings in the most optimistic way possible, seizing on any ambiguities to infer a less serious situation. That pretty much says it in a nutshell. What also they should state is how the majority of people will get angry at people like myself and others who are just really trying to awaken them. And I'll give you a proper analogy about this. Let's say you and your buddies have a frat house and you have the most incredible party you've ever had. People are passed out drunk everywhere people vomiting, people throwing up really sick at the end of the night. It was so much fun, they drank so much, that they passed out, people were vomiting, people were really all, really messed up. Let's say I'm the only sober person at that party. I go to sleep. All of a sudden, I smell smoke. Wake up to realize that somebody passed out with a cigarette, and the house is now on fire. Now, I go to my closest friend, passed out on the floor somewhere in the living room. He's drunk. I'm trying to wake him up. I'm like, listen, there's a fire. Get up. He's so drunk, he's incoherent. He doesn't know what's going on. All he realizes is the fact that somebody is awakening him from his sleep while his head is spinning. So he's going to get pissed. He's going to get aggravated. He's going to be like, leave me alone, dude. I'm trying to sleep. Not realizing that there's a fire. So should I 
as a good person, just say, oh, well, they don't want to be woken up, they don't want to be disturbed, so I guess I should just leave them there, let them potentially die? No. I'm going to keep waking him up, I'm going to throw water on his face, and I may even have to pick him up and carry him out. And even if I carried him out of the, the room and out of the house into safety, he might be sitting there like, what the hell, dude? Why are you doing this? Leave me alone. I'm sick. I'm nauseous. I, why are you doing this to me? Let me alone. And he may even try and hit me, or maybe even try and get into the house. Until all of a sudden, when he realizes what's going on and sees the house in flames, he'll realize why I went above and beyond to try and save him and help him and awaken him. So that's what the average person really needs to consider when somebody's trying to go out of their way to shake you awake. They're not doing it because they're crazy. They're not doing it because they have nothing better to do. They're doing it because they're trying to get you out of that burning building before you die. And just because you were asleep and you didn't know that there was a fire because you were too drunk or too passed out or whatever to realize it does not mean you wouldn't have died in that fire. So these are things we need to, work, to, to talk about. So, you know, I'm not a person in a suit. I don't work for Wall Street. I don't work for the government. I don't make elaborate videos. And sometimes I stutter or mess up a word. That's why I don't edit my videos. I want people to see it's just a regular, ordinary patriot trying his best to speak truth. I can be over-emotional at times. I can be over-passionate at times. To me, I would rather be over-emotional and over-passionate than somebody that just doesn't care. And we do have to learn, and I even had to learn, we have to subdue some of the emotions and really learn just truth. There are going to be people that hate that. There are going to be people who ignore that. I've learned there's not much I can do about that. There's always going to be haters. There's always going to be people that don't like truth. There are going to be people out there that don't want you to know the truth. Don't help them by just watching American Idol and not learning about what's going on. Because the media, they're, they're bought and paid for, and they're going to give you misinformation. Even things like the Second Amendment. So if you want your right to protect yourself taken away from you, then do nothing. And that's why I'm not afraid to show my face and make videos. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to do that. Some people just totally take that the wrong way. What I'm saying is we have to stop being afraid. Because united we stand and divided we fall. We've had enough division. We've had enough fights. I myself am sick of fighting with people. I've learned my lesson, even when people tried to bully me or try and trap me into things. And I fell for it. And a lot of us do. We have to learn just as much as I do. But we need to research. We need to learn the truth. Learn about capital letters. Learn about gold trim around the flag. We're being lied to. We're being controlled. We do nothing. Maybe we deserve it. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.